Welcome to this week's episode of the hashtag Proud to be LBUSD podcast. Our guest today here is Mrs. Rochelle Martin, here to talk about the collaborative co-teaching model that is being implemented within LBUSD. Today, we'll discuss why this method is being used, how it works, and some of the benefits we've already seen from its use at schools in the district. So thank you for coming in today. Thank you for having me. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be here. Cool. So why don't you start off by giving us an introduction to the goals behind the collaborative co-teaching method? Sure, sure. Um, well, I think the goals that I would call out as being the most important for the collaborative co-teaching method are, are really kind of what we want for every classroom, right? We want our students to have meaningful learning opportunities. We want our students to have um, rigorous assignments. We want all of our students to feel like they belong, right? So everything we want for all students is really what we want for our students in our collaborative co-teaching classrooms. Um, I think the difference would be is we are really thinking about students who have disabilities and kind of one of our foundational principles is that we want students to be in the least restrictive environment. And so really what that means is we want students who have disabilities to be with students who don't have disabilities as much as they can. Um, so we use that kind of as our, our guiding principle as why we need lots of options for students um, to receive their education. So when we look at our collaborative co-teaching classes, it really is just a standard classroom. Mm -hmm. um, but the difference is there's two teachers and um, some of the students have IEPs and some of the students are receiving services in those classes um, and some of the students do not. Um, but every time I'm asked about it, I just always <laughs> think, well, what are the goals we have for all classrooms? And those are really the same goals that we have for our collaborative co-teaching classrooms. Like we want students to achieve, we want them to be happy, we want them to have you know, social networks. We want mm -hmm. them to have authentic friendships. We want all of those things. Um, mm -hmm. But just making sure that it's an opportunity for students who have um, disabilities to have kind of like a, a systematic way that we can ensure in our schools that um, those those classes are available for students whose needs would best be met in those rooms. Cool. Well, for those who aren't aware, maybe can you explain what the collaborative co-teaching is? Sure. Yes. Um, so our collaborative co-teaching classrooms are um, essentially just a regular classroom. They're a general education classroom. Um, the difference is, is that we have two teachers. So in the classroom, we have one teacher who is um, like our content teacher <laughs> or just our general education teacher. Mm -hmm. And then we have one teacher who is our education specialist. And those two teachers work together um, collaboratively to teach all of the students in the classroom. So um, we currently have classrooms in pre-K um, up through grade two. Um, it has, you know... 30 students or whatever, mm -hmm. however many are in that classroom. And then we save um, a few spaces in that classroom for students whose IEP team, um, their families mm -hmm. and the schools make a recommendation that this is the best place for them to have their needs met. So it's, um, it's pretty exciting to mm -hmm. see because when you have two teachers, um, you can do a lot of things that you can't do when you're by yourself. Um, and so during our um, kind of all of our training and professional development with the teachers, we really focus on um, uh, different approaches to co-teaching. So in the classrooms, you'll see the teachers, um, sometimes they're both up in front and mm -hmm. they're each taking a different role mm -hmm. in the lesson. Sometimes they split the class in half and they're giving the same lesson and um, they're just doing it to smaller groups so that Students can talk more. Teachers can mm -hmm. be, um, give more feedback. Um, or you'll see small groups happening around the classroom. Or sometimes it's um, uh, one is teaching and the other is providing some support with um, like materials or um, just making sure that it's accessible to everyone in the classroom. So um, that's kind of the, the structure of the classroom. I think one thing that's really um, – exciting about it is that both of the teachers teach 
all of the kids. Like oh. it is truly mm-hmm. that you have two teachers. So how cool is that that kids get to go home and, you know, you know, Mrs. Martin and <laughs> Mrs. Day, like they're both of our teachers. Like they have two teachers who are, you know, instructing them in the day, who are um, meeting with the families, who are, you know, taking them on field trips, just doing all of the things that um, one teacher would do. But um, now we have um, students who might have some more needs and um, their special education teacher is in that classroom teaching all of the kids Mm -hmm. together and making sure that not only can they access it, but that it's, um, uh, you know, using strategies that that benefit them. But a lot of the times the strategies benefit everyone, Um, even though some of the students it's necessary for those strategies to be in place. Cool. I mean, that sounds wonderful. And that was a good explanation. Like, I know that when I was younger, I feel like I would have loved that, like, not one, but two. And I feel like that helps also just with your learning. Like, maybe you're, you know, one of the teachers is busy and you have the other to, you know, kind of assist you with those kinds of things. So I think that's really wonderful that, you know, some of the younger kids, while they're develop- developing, that they yeah. get that. Extra I mean, help. and you think about like how we learn from each other, Mm -hmm. right? And you know that when you have a lot of teachers, right, (laughs) as you are in secondary and you're moving through classes, you learn differently from different people because of the way they present things. And so in these classrooms, we have two teachers who have different expertise, but can present the same material in different ways. So if it's not making sense for you this way, well, let me add something in that's going to help or let me try it another way. Um, So it definitely is... um, a benefit to all of the students in those classrooms. Well, now I'm curious now, how have you seen the teachers and the students adjusting to this model at the schools? Um, It has been, I don't know, it's been really positive. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I think, um, you know, we started these classrooms um, right on the brink of a pandemic, Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, which, you know, no one no one expected and we're all still learning and moving through. Um, But overall, it's been really positive. Um, I think teachers, of course, have to learn how to have two teachers in the room because it's not a standard way that we typically um, teach, right? So, Um, not only do they have to learn, like, how are we going to be in a space together, but um, it also helps in that the students get to see models of, like, how do people collaborate and how Mm -hmm. do people, you know, share a space. Um, But we really have had um, amazing teachers um, that have really put their heart and soul into um, really just being inclusive educators and our students have really been been thriving and um it's funny like you know you ask how have they adjusted and really the kids are just kids right yeah. like a kindergartner is a kindergartner so they don't <laughs> they don't really even they just think oh cool i have yeah. two teachers right so um they're just you going know, with it <laughs> they're just going with it and um you know, I think benefiting from having two teachers, but not they even they else. not even not even knowing that you know um, something special is really happening here. And so you said that it was kind of at the brink of the pandemic. So did you guys start the program before? Yeah, oh, wow. yeah, okay. we had um, uh, five pilot classrooms um, the year before. The pandemic started. Wow. Yes. And um, it, it truly was uh, just an amazing group of teachers who, um, I call them our trailblazers, <laughs> like they just, they wanted to um, try something different and they um, just felt compelled that they could really support students mm-hmm. in a different way. Um, and we went virtual and <laughs> they went virtual. Mm-hmm. Um And I will say, I remember reaching out to some of our co-teachers during the pandemic and just, um, you know, getting some feedback from them around how it was going. And I remember one teacher saying that um, co-teaching in a virtual world is the best thing ever. (laughs) 
<laughs> but you think about how everyone was just having to yeah. adjust so much. And so, you know, one teacher might have had some strengths with technology, but all of the things that happened during that time, there was always someone else there to like make sure that you're checking in on the students. And um, just, I think they really appreciated each other even more after, I mean, I think we all appreciate <laughs> each other even more after mm -hmm. going through our, I mean, we're still living in a pandemic, but after what we have all moved through mm -hmm. in, in education, I think um, connection of the teachers has grown. And I think just the appreciation for a model where you can really have more, more attention on your students and really meet their needs in a different way has just yeah. um, been really appreciated. Oh, yeah, that's so cool to hear. And so I know that you said that the program is for pre-K up to second grade, correct? Okay. Correct. Um, so I know that for the younger kids, it may be a little bit harder to tell, but kind of with the older kids, so far, what are the results that you've seen from the CCT classes? Yeah, um, we've actually had, um, so we have it in pre-K through grade two right now. We mm -hmm. have um, some of our classrooms that are already at grade two will be growing up to grade three mm -hmm. next year. Um, but we've we've kind of taken an interesting approach in that um, it just doesn't, it doesn't feel fair mm -hmm. <laughs> that we have students who maybe missed that time yeah. frame and they're in fourth grade or fifth grade. Mm -hmm. And um, we want to make sure for all of our students that we're thinking about um, inclusive options. And so on the other end, right, we've been really working with our middle schools and high schools on how we can um, – be more inclusive with our scheduling, just really thinking flexibly around what do students what do students need? Yeah. And if we can provide services and support them in a general education classroom, then that's what we want to do. And so we've started um, it's different than the co-teaching model, the mm -hmm. collaborative co-teaching program in yeah. elementary, just mm -hmm. because of the nature that yeah. it's, you know, Two teachers <laughs> with one class all day long, yeah. right? It gets a little more complex in middle and high school when you're moving through so many periods and have so many different teachers. And so in um, secondary, so mm -hmm. sixth grade through 12th grade, we have co-teaching as um, a, a way that we deliver services to students who have IEPs. Um, so they might have co-teaching for, um, you know, a period, like if you have um, needs in math or you have needs in English or literacy, um, so you might have a co-taught section. So mm -hmm. like one of your classes is co-taught. Um, so you're getting your services in your general education classroom. So we're hoping that <laughs> with that, like everyone can mm -hmm. have more opportunities to be in inclusive settings and receive their services in the least restrictive yeah place that we possibly can. So we're super excited about that. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, one of my colleagues has been working so hard on just um, training and being being there to support um, our teachers and schools as they're um, really thinking flexibly around inclusive models. Um, we just looked at some numbers the other day and we have, I want to say, um, I think it was 80 middle school co-teachers wow. and um, I think 90 high school. Um, so that's a lot of mm -hmm. movement towards, um, you know, more inclusive ways. Um, to, it sounds like it. That's so yeah. cool to hear. And in addition to the kids who have IEPs, has well, have you seen personally uh, the CCT model also benefiting the kids who are just in regular general education classes? Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, we use kind of a, a planning framework for how we design our instruction called Universal Design for Learning. And um, it's a UDL for short. But <laughs> Universal Design for Learning is, is really a framework. It's a mindset that's like how do we, how do we proactively plan for instruction that is universally mm -hmm. accessible, right? So we think about like what are all the ways we can, we can create our lessons so that um, – all different learning preferences are are being met, mm -hmm. and what are all different ways that students can show us that they understand what we're teaching, mm -hmm. and and how can we embed engagement into that? And so, um, with the framework, um, that's kind of been uh, 
a, a big part of like all the training that that we do. So when we um, implement with UDL, um, students really benefit whether you have a disability or not. So it's it's one of those things where UDL is really like it is necessary in our planning for students with disabilities. Like they have to mm -hmm. have multiple ways that they're receiving information because we're really um, teaching to their needs, their preferences, really thinking about, um, you know, where their strengths are, all of that. But if a teacher is providing content that is, you know, I'm going to give you some text to read, mm -hmm. we're going to um, watch a video, there's some audio, we're going to make sure that there's color coding, there's supports embedded, like all of those things are available to everyone, right? Everyone benefits from those. It's just important to think about we're purposefully planning those because they are necessary for those students who have disabilities and who might um, access the the curriculum in a different way. So um, we have seen a lot of benefits from that, mm -hmm. right? Like I can show you a strategy that um, might be, you know, mm -hmm. really important for one kid, but can benefit all of them. So um, beyond that, um, when we look at kind of what research says, um, I like to think about our graduate profile. And when we think about our Long Beach Unified School District graduate profile, it's kind of like when we leave the school district, we want all of our students, we're saying all of our students are these have these skills, right? They're they're ethical decision makers, they're they're um adaptive citizens, they're um co you know, collaborators, effective communicators, you know, they have academic skills and a lot of the research that supports inclusive models like directly aligns to our graduate profile. Um, so we see a lot of benefits for students without disabilities um, and students with disabilities. So increased academics. Um, if you think about I'm going to explain things in a mm -hmm. different way to different people. We're working collaboratively. Like you learn things differently and you you can um, express them, you know, in different ways. So um, academics is a huge one. Um, we also see for students without disabilities um, just better ethical decision making, mm -hmm. um, uh, increased friendships and social network, like a better uh, self-concept and self-esteem. And then for students with disabilities, we see a lot of similar benefits, right? We see benefits in academics. We see like improved communication, like more um, uh, fulfilling friendships and uh, like social networks are yeah. wider. Um, and we just see overall um, just better outcomes even mm -hmm. post, um, post high school. So mm -hmm. um, I just kind of keep that graduate profile in mind all mm -hmm. the time, even when I'm talking to preschool teachers, <laughs> <laughs> because it's where we're all saying, like it's, yeah. it's preschool to kinder to first grade, all of us are working towards that. And we mm -hmm. all have a piece in that. And um, even though it might not be something that, <laughs> that they're thinking about, like they're the foundation for this is what we're working towards. This is what we're all moving our students towards. And um, you know, inclusive options just allow for that to happen in a way that um, we can't necessarily always plan for, right? There's going to be outcomes that happen that um, we may never be able to measure mm -hmm. um, that um, it just, it, it's that thing that, that, um, that keeps me going, just thinking about how important it is um, for families and students to have um, options and voice and how um, their students are experiencing being at school and whether they are in an inclusive classroom mm -hmm. or not, um, everyone deserves to be included. Everyone deserves to um, belong. Everyone deserves um, friendships and and really quality instruction and um, it's just, it's very hopeful that we're we're moving and supporting our schools in this way. Yeah, hundred percent. And I, you know, LBUSD strives for its students or strives to implement equity and inclusivity in all of their schools. And it sounds like collaborative co-teaching is doing exactly that. 
So I'm very, like you said, hopeful and encouraged by this and hearing what you've told me today. So I just wanted to thank you for coming in today. Those were all the questions I had for you. Awesome. Yeah. It was wonderful to meet you. Yeah, thank it was you. Nice meeting you. It's so interesting to talk about it because um it's you said it's in high schools too as well. It is. Yeah. So some it of the is. freshmen at my school have like kind of been going into it. I've n- I never like knew what it was. I was just hearing about it. So it's kind of cool to like, oh, that's what that is. Yeah. I mean, and our hopes are that if a like co-teacher is in a class, mm-hmm. like that everyone just realizes like it's about two teachers teaching the class. Mm-hmm. It's not one lead teacher and yeah. one support teacher. Yeah. It's that, um, and I, oh my gosh, I saw so many cool things, especially during virtual learning, um, where in secondary and high school mm-hmm. specifically, where um, like one teacher was like the math teacher and they mm, were yeah. delivering the math instruction and in the chat or on the board, <laughs> the other teacher is like writing out, like, here's yeah. the steps. And you would see everyone just yeah. like, okay, like going back <laughs> to it because, you know, it's, yeah. um, it's just, different ways of thinking. Mm -hmm. And I just, I feel so much like having students see that you can approach things in different ways and both make sense and both can be helpful. Um, It just, there's, there's a lot of benefits Mm -hmm. from it. So yeah. So I hope you see more. 